Clark, don't pick your nose in front of me, please. I'm not picking, I'm scratching. What are you scratching, your brain? Yeah, because it's huge. Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. Welcome to an all-new episode of Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brennan McCorkle, and Mike is on the lam, Crawford. What's up, buddy? What's going on, my guy? How you doing today? I'm doing See that beautiful sunshine coming through the window? I've never seen a window in the background when I recorded before. Yeah, First we finally let place. you out of the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Finally out of the basement, man. Finally out of the basement. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm get I'm all fuzzy because I'm gonna get a haircut after that and the beard trim. It's been like two months since I've seen the barber, which is as a while. I'm not seeing the barber again until April, so get used to this face. Yeah, I will say that it's hard to tell when you need a haircut because you wear hats a lot. But even when you don't, like you know, your hair's not all frazzly like mine is. You're you could definitely tell in your beard though. Your beard gets scraggly as fuck. But yeah, I took this hat off. But... You know, but yeah, I'm just a fluffy yeah. buns today. Yeah, I don't care. Maybe I should wear this cowboy hat for the rest of the duration of this episode. <laughs> there you go. Then we could be the hat, the hat crew. Oh, I'll put it on. I'm not gonna stand up because I'm in my underwear. But yeah, look at cowboy Brendan coming at you. This would have been the most views we ever got if you had stood up. Bro. Oh, probably. No, I doubt it. Nobody <laughs> wants to see this. This, this magic tyke stick. <laughs> no, don't worry. Even if it's for laughs or enjoyment, the views would go up. No, I the can't news. do that yet. We, Especially, we I got all my worldly belongings in it. Like ninety five percent of my belongings are in this room at this time. So yeah, we would, we there's not a lot of room to maneuver that. right now. We need to talk in the town. <laughs> I wouldn't. Whatever. That's the sad part. I would not. You wouldn't what? Be the talk of the town. Just for standing up and showing my I junk do. in boxers. These are the testicle I forward do. boxers that I've had issues with at the gym. I don't care who you are. A guy standing up, exposing his junk on his podcast will hit like every social media platform. It's not so true, you know, Mike. I'll do it. I don't care. Look. <laughs> Look, we could do a, a wiener shot, a mic shot. No, nobody, nobody. Look, did you I even notice see. that the mic was perfectly placed to cover my dong sitch? Like, come on, brother, that is <laughs> that is yeah, cameraman one hundred and one right there. I'm gonna be on the video when the world hear about this. I'm gonna be on the other side of the video telling you stop, stop. <laughs> Actually, you were the one that encouraged me to do it, Mike. So I'm just gonna clip it out to where you're like, and I'm gonna insert little Mike clips from previous episodes. Like, let me see your dick, and be like, "Gosh, Mike, okay, okay." <laughs> I would have to dig very deep to find that very particular clip, but I'm sure I could do it. It would probably have to be some piecing because I don't think I've ever in my life told you I wanted to see your penis. See, I could just clip that out. Because you could say, you just said, I don't think I've ever said, and then you said the thing that I need. So you literally just gave me the gift. That's the beauty yeah. of editing. Now, if I sat down and did it more often, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm too busy going to the gym and crap like that. Not really. I didn't go to the gym today. But <laughs> I have experienced sure. all kinds like of... nine o'clock, you got plenty of time to go to the gym. Well, usually I try to go to the gym in the morning. That way I can get my exercises done, my blood flowing, and then it gets me a success in the bag for the day. And then I parlay that throughout the rest of the day, continue that momentum. Now you can just now you can just switch it because we usually record at night. So just go when we were recorded. Usually, bam, you still get to gym. See, but anymore. today I've got podcast, barber, little league baseball game. Edit, post, comedy tonight. I got no time for, for the gym tonight, today. 
I know it's okay. Sorry. It's it's filled with other good things. It's, but it's <laughs> you've been working out yourself, like you said. You started doing a little jogs and push ups and stuff. It's, Just it's so painful, bro. It I'm is. Some days I can't wait till this part of it is over, and I'm actually back into routine. So it's not just like some days I wake up and it feels like everything up here just doesn't shouldn't move for the day. It's like nope, we're not gonna move any of that up today. Shoulder, neck, none of that. Dude, I'm telling you, I I am not a believer, or I am a believer in it. I'm just not one that a steward of it. I don't do warm ups very often. I don't stretch hardly at all. But I am telling you, on the days that I allow myself the opportunity to do that, and my crazy little brain that's like, you're wasting time, you're wasting time, you're wasting time. Like, if I'm not fighting that, and I can just be present and like, this is good for you, use 10 minutes to warm up and stretch, I always feel better. Like, it always is easier to do the exercise, and it never hurts as bad afterwards. I always stretch, man. It's just I'm old. I'm get. I'm just like it's been years since I worked out regularly. Yeah, but the problem with being yeah. old and and jogging is you have to do like arm circles to go on a jog because then your t- your top part gets all tight and sore even when you're jogging. It's just it's not good getting old. Getting old sucks, bro. Yeah, man. But I do full on stretches because I do want to put up to my sit ups before I jog. So yeah, man. But you know, it's a process. I'll get there. You're doing good. Do you ever think you'll go to the gym? I go to the gym too. Sometimes you do. I mean, I you have a gym membership? No, no, no. I went and played ball at LA Fitness with somebody else. I know who has a gym membership. Ah, uh, okay. no gym. Well, that's what but I'm saying. I, don't have to. I know somebody who works at Planet Fitness, honestly. So he told me I'm good. I don't have to buy a gym membership. So I go there sometimes and hit the stairmaster. You ever hit the locker room? No. I hate gym locker rooms. No offense to old white guys, bro, but they are so comfortable with themselves. Yeah. I got used to back when I was a little bit younger and I used to work I used to work at the YMCA. So you talk about like Those are the oldest scene. people too. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about a wild scene. You walk in there and there's Johnsons everywhere. Just everybody Johnson everywhere. Stinky Johnsons, fresh out the side with Johnson, Johnson, Johnson and Johnson. It's just Johnsons everywhere. And people are like overly comfortable with that. And I'm just not overly comfortable with walking around with a whole bunch of dudes with their junk out. Maybe call me what you want, but I don't know. It's just weird to me. No, see, I think it's kind of weird too. I think it's weird when guys hang out naked, not in their house, and linger. Like, when, if you could have a conversation with somebody and they're just butt naked and it's not less than 30 seconds, do something about the coverage. Butt naked. Don't know each other, and y'all having full conversations about your workout plans while you're sitting there butt naked. Like y'all couldn't put no boxes Dude, on at least. Like, come the on. The worst, the worst thing. So I see, I see this stuff in the gym, but I go to a more like it's. I go to a gym where there's a lot of younger people. There's still some old people there, but it's like the old people are the super fit people, old guys, and gals, and then like the younger crowd. It just it's like. Okay, I'm not working hard as that guy. It helps me. It helps me. I don't like doing comparisons, but if I'm comparing my effort, then that's the only thing I'll compare. It's like I'm always trying to give my best effort. And unfortunately, if you go to the gym four to five times a week, it's hard to put in your best effort every single time. And so those days that I have tough time with that, if I'm at, you know, uh, the why working out with a bunch of old people and be like, I am crushing right now. These guys wish they could put in as much effort as me. But then I go to a different gym, which is like a bunch of college dudes that are trying to get swole. I'm like, you ain't working as hard as that guy. You better work harder, bro. <laughs> so it's like, I don't, I'm not trying to get their physique or anything. I'm just like the effort, maximum effort to put in. But that being said, the locker room is so much different. And they still, same difference. Like you still have cats walking around just because they want to walk around naked and you're like, who are you trying to impress here? Cause if it's yeah. us, then okay. But you're acting like you're not trying to impress us. So then put it away. Which one is it? <laughs> it's old white guys and young black dudes that are ripped. <laughs> young black dudes that are ripped are like, fuck you. Look at everything. You're like, okay. And old white guys are like, Mm, fuck you guys. You have to see everything. <laughs> I don't know no young black dude that are ripped. 
Oh, well, maybe that's why. The the young black dudes in Southern California that go to the gym to pick up chicks are going that. around. They're the guys that have to get told in the gym, hey, you have to put your shirt back on. Like they're taking their shirt off in the gym to work out and take pictures. They're like, okay, not supposed to be doing this, not supposed to be doing that. Can we get this all together? And then they go to the locker room, and then they're walking around naked in front of all these dudes, and you're like, okay, are we having a conversation too? Because unfortunately the conversations are – like the most bang your head against the wall like I'm not, I'm not having a conversation with someone who's standing there naked we can't talk me we neither nothing to talk about. i went to the, the gym i went to the gym not two days ago i got in put my stuff in the locker get all changed up go to walk out there's a dude sitting naked on the bench like getting on a phone call like hey yeah man like handling business and i'm like okay Maybe it was a business call he had to do right there. He was like, fuck this. I'm not getting up to whatever. Like, mid-40s, decently shaped dude. Little older than me, little bit better shape, hanging out. I go work out for a little over an hour. I come back. <laughs> this man is sitting naked on the phone in the same spot. He's been on this conference call for an hour, naked, in a gym locker room. Tell me who that serves. No way. He's just a loser. No and then on the opposite side of that, you got two other ding-dongs. Like the, the talk in a male locker room at the gym is ridiculous. It's mostly every conversation I pick up is you wouldn't say that if the other party was here. That's all of the conversations, whether it be about working your boss, whether it be about this girl that you're playing up that may or may not exist whether it be about your boy who you told to shut the fuck up, you would not say any of those things if that other party was here. So all of it is just projections of toxic masculinity just all over the locker room. And then if that's not good enough, they'll just people will walk up to you naked and just stand there until they know that you have seen them. No one's walking up to me, Nick. No, but you if they're in a locker it. three away from you, there are yeah. there are dudes that will purposely no, not get dressed until the people in the row like look over and check them out. It's so weird, a male gym locker room. Do you think the women's <laughs> locker room is like that? Oh no, because they actually compliment each other. So it's more like, oh girl, them titties getting big. Like no, you, know, so you like, think they're, they're in there like Girl, I was doing the the leg squeezes. My clit's getting so hard. He's got to tongue punch this box so good. Blah, 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 just like a speed bag. Like, do you think they're they talking nasty. nasty and shit like that? Or are they just like, oh, girl? I don't know if they get that they nasty, but as far as their body, they have no problem looking at and complimenting each other's body. Like, it's probably nakedness all around there and no one cares. But in the mirror, like, the room is different. I don't want to see that shit. Men are ugly. I get dressed and get the hell out of there. I'll take a shower at home, buddy. Uh, yeah, I'm never, dude. I got people that are like, dude, go use the sauna at the gym. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the sweat box that 200 men go in every day? I'm cool on that. And half of them don't wear shoes. Half of them go in there naked. It's like, dude, there's rules for all of this stuff. Definitely don't shower there. I'm never gonna be in a place where I could get a good enough shower at the gym. To go on to my next endeavor. Like, it would be a half shower, half stink. I might as well not have even tried. Yeah. The only time I'd shower at the gym is if I was living out of my car. Yeah, there you go. Because then that's the one place that's probably better than the shower. Yeah, you could pay 20 bucks a month to have showers. That's cheaper than a home water bill. Yeah, I read a story about a guy who does that. Literally lives off the land. Like, he lives in his car, goes to the gym, and shower, doesn't own any place. Some old one place. of my yeah. sister's good friends growing up did that. She might have even dated him while he was living in a car. Yeah, no, he's not. I mean, he doesn't consider himself homeless. He got a job and stuff. He just says cheaper, which technically it is. Yeah, this guy worked at Sears. Like he didn't have an apartment. He lived out of his car. He ate normal foods and stuff. Like, he had a job so he could eat McDonald's and fast food and whatnot. But that was about it. He paid his car payment, his insurance payment, and his gym membership. And other than that, he just lived. 
think I'm gonna go about that. Why not stop paying seventeen fifty and live off the gym? They're open twenty four hours. I can go in there anytime I want if I wanted to. Like, yeah, but sleeping situation is tough. If you go there like one and two, you could find you a nice quiet area in the gym and get you a good power three four hour power nap every night. The gym's not popping at three four five in the morning. Like, don't let people make you believe that it's not. Yeah, it but it's not very comfortable either. There. You gotta, you gotta make it comfortable, right? make it your own. And for someone who grew up possibly sleeping on floor some nights, comfortable, whatever. Man, just give me a pillow and a blanket. I'm gonna make this thing. Yeah, but you were just you. talking about it like you were upgrading your life. No, you were upgrading your bank account, buddy. Not your life. Yeah, your but which one? But what's worth it? What's worth it there? Depends on what your aim is. Think about it. If you're a sixty thousand dollar a year employee. Right, and with that sixty thousand, you're currently paying seventeen fifty of rent, two thousand dollars of rent in both of our areas at least. Mm-hmm. That's seventeen. Yeah, you're paying twenty million. grand a year in rent. You're paying a third okay. is in rent. You got a bunch taken out for taxes. You're left with twenty five thousand dollars to live off the land for the year. If you're paying two thousand a month in rent times twelve, so that's twenty four grand. I was going off your seventeen fifty, but that's fine. Yeah, but 20, 20 grand because seventeen fifty is not possible in either one of our area anymore, really. Especially with Amazon coming here, I know some people who pay twenty seven hundred dollars in rent. So I'm not going to go. There. I'm looking. I'm currently up. looking, and I can't find anything above a studio apartment that's not a guest house. That's like a townhome or an apartment. I can't find anything for less than twenty eight hundred to three grand. Nothing. Exactly. So I'm do two grand on the whole, and that's twenty four grand a month. And if you can change that to two hundred and forty dollars a year instead of twenty four grand a year, you can buy a house in a year, bro. You can literally have the down payment for a house. If you can make this work for a year, you can literally have a down payment for a house. You literally turn twenty four grand into two hundred and forty dollars. Yes, but what? So, so here's the thing: you have two things going on there. Number one, you are admitting that the ultimate goal is to have more comfortable digs. Number two. Is that worth yeah. the squeeze? Because here's the thing is every single time in life you have a plan, it doesn't go according to plan. You have to be willing to for that to be adjustable. So if you're planning on saving for a year, but then your car breaks down because you have a piece of shit car and you're living out of it and it's you live in the gym, then you got to replace your car, then you get a setback. So there's always going to be setbacks along any type of plan you have. But if the plan is ultimately to get comfortable... Is it worth the trade-off of your $2,000 a month and kind of living tight to never have to live in the gym and see how long that duration of saving money is going to take you? And who knows what you got to try and avoid while you're not in a home or an apartment. It just doesn't seem like the juice is worth the squeeze there, buddy. It depends on who you are and what your goals are. I mean, because you can say that. Now, if you're already broke and don't have the option, yeah, do that, baby. Yeah. Say that about the people in the it's basically the same idea the people of the pandemic use. In Virginia, it was you don't have to pay your rent rule when the pandemic was going on. But you're gonna have to pay it when the pandemic's lifted. So people chose to not pay their rent at all, knowing that they wouldn't be evicted, saved all that money, and went and brought a house. So when the pandemic was lifted and <laughs> that landlord came and said, pay this money. They said to hell with you. We own a house now. I ain't paying you shit. Is the consequences worth it when you have to go to court later and possibly get sued for that money that you owe? Maybe, maybe not. All depends on who you are and what your goals are in life. But you got your house. (laughs) Yeah, that's a much different situation than living in the gym because you're out of your car and all that stuff. That was that was a kind of a once in our lifetime thing, I think. This will be a once in your lifetime thing. Once you buy the house, it's yours. Uh, you're yeah, unless poorly. you can't live there anymore. But you're not living poorly. You work. You have a decent job. It's not like you have to be poor. So you don't have to like live like the homeless. Yeah. Like living in your car doesn't mean you have to live like the homeless. Like keep your car clean. Only drive it minimal, depending on where work is. Spend a lot of time, more time at that gym than you more normal people would. And save your money. Go chill at your friends and stuff how during the week. Like, hang out. Find reason to hang out during the week, man. What's up, man? You want to play some video games tonight? Want to watch some ball tonight? Listen, as somebody who has been the nomad, 
that shit gets old with your friends quick. They're like, you're only <laughs> hanging out with us because you need a place to go. And yeah, at a certain shit. point, it becomes, yeah. well, 50-50. Like, I do want to hang out with you, but I also need somewhere to go. And so I chose this option. And it just it, it kind of fizzles friendships. It sucks. Oh, man, you got some shitty friends. Well, <laughs> I haven't always been the best person myself. So, you know, it's sure. six in one, half a dozen in the other. Yes, I guess that's right. Can I ask you something? I did. Okay. <laughs> I got one of these uh, pre-workout energy drinks before the gym thing. We're just still on the gym, but I'm leaving it. And they had like a Starburst flavor, or whatever. I'm like, fine, give me the. I don't see those like the G3, G, G4 thing. Yeah. And so I grab it and it's pink. And I'm like, cool, pink Starburst. But then it had the flavor listed on it. I never knew what pink Starburst was. Pink Starburst is strawberry. Well, yeah, I didn't know that until I saw it on a can when I was 38 years old. You know me. You know. I just I knew it was pink. You know I love strawberry. You know I love the pink starburst. You could have put that together long ago, my friend. Well, I, I know that, but you know how there, there's red. Red, which is, is it fruit punch or cherry? I don't know. I think it's cherry because it's a bit sour. See, exactly. That's they probably like have it printed on the stupid label and we just fail to read it. But I just didn't yeah, know never all this. Read the label. I just didn't know all this time that pink Starburst was strawberry. But that did get me thinking about candy. And as we usually touch on food at least every like three episodes here. When last time you had candy? Two Maybe days you ago. eat candy often? Really? Well, two days ago I had, I had some, some chocolates left over from Valentine's Day. I was just like, you know what? I'm going on my diet. There's like a few chocolates here that the kids aren't going to eat. There's like two Girl Scout cookies left in this little sleeve. And it was like in a little plastic bag. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. And then that way it's out and I just won't replace it. It'll be gone. Cool. I had candy a couple days ago. I had to take five. Those shits are so fine. You love your take five. I don't really eat candy. I don't really eat candy because it has pretzel in it. Like mix that sweet and savory, man. It hits me every time. But yeah, I think I had candy. Like it's probably been months before that. Like I don't eat candy. Well, I got, what's got, your favorite what's your favorite girl scout cookie now that you brought that up, buddy? Uh I don't know. Oh man. But they got this new one called Toshies. Those were the ones that I had. Like, Toshies are French toast cookies. The problem is they're too crispy. They're not if they were soft cookies, bro. Well, you gotta dip them. I personally can't have milk, but my friends dip them in milk. I personally dip them in orange juice. Most people are going to think that's disgusting, but I'm lactose intolerant, so to hell with you. Um, but, yes, Toshies are the best thing smoking, bro. I bought, like, 17 packs. I <laughs> drove down to Orange County to get them because they don't sell them in L.A. County. So when... They don't sell them in that either. We had to order them off of, like, a special. We had to, like, go searching for them. Me and my friends were all, like, Toshies. Yeah, Toshies. Those are the I'm best. Associates that like we want like to have them by the bundle, so yeah, we ordered like seventeen packs of that shit. Nice, yeah. I drove down to Orange County, so I drove for two hours to go hang out down in OC. I got like four sleeves of Toastiers and bounced. Mm -hmm. And they got another one that's got like a turtle candy in the middle of it. That one's pretty good. See that Brown that I haven't tried. Because, I mean, we get, like, Girl Scout cookies are fine and they're good, but I don't necessarily have a favorite. Now, the Toastiers would be my favorite, would be, like, unequivocally the best Girl Scout cookie, except they crumble too much. Because they're, like, they're the size of, like, a playing card almost. Like, like they're fairly big size cookies. And so when you take a bite of a corner, it's not like a pop it in your mouth. You have to take a bite. And then it's kind of like the rest of it falls apart. Had it been a little bit softer, had it been in that medium range to where it's like soft on the outside, just a, like the the top layer, and then the rest of it's crispy so that it holds it together, it'd be the perfect cookie because it's got that little French toast icing on the backside. It's beautiful. Ooh, so beautiful. So beautiful. That got me thinking, though, about the types of people that would be associated with certain candies. Like if you think of a candy, what type of person do you think? eats that candy. 
So, well, well, I'm not just going to leave you out in the weeds. I have a little bit of a thing here. So, like, I would say, like, Mike and Ike. Who in the world eats Mike and Ike outside of deadbeat dads and security guards? I don't know a single soul that eats Mike and Ike. Exactly. Deadbeat dads and security guards on post. They're eating the stale candy with their Securitas, whatever, smoking weed, watching videos in their little security (laughs) booth. Nobody eats Mike and Ike. Yeah, my man Brendan is definitely disrespected right now. Shout shout out to you people. Keep the world safe. All right, Brendan, next camera. It's keeping the world safe. Come on. I work with so many of these people on construction sites that are just like, you're actually making this worse. You're making a <laughs> higher level of threat here because everybody knows you're not paying attention or you're passing out in your car on your brakes and taking two hour <laughs> breaks instead of 15 minute breaks. You're not surveilling anything here. I have had plenty of good interactions with Securitas and the Securitas family. However, most of the time they hire people that are somewhat unhirable that still want to be in a position of power. So it's usually like fat Mexican dudes and old black ladies. That is like Securitas 101 in Southern California. It's totally the opposite here. It's usually young black girl and Oh, Mexican dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Securitas got all the young black DC girls, Merle girls out here. Nice. Go up to a building, little cute girl walking around with Securitas uniform on. Shout out to Securitas for keeping it cute. Oh, Respect man. See, we need a little more of that around here. It, well, maybe it was just construction sites. They're like, listen, construction workers are a pain in the ass. We need to send somebody that they're not going to fuck with. <laughs> Fat Mexican dudes and old black ladies. <laughs> oh, man, that's so wild. Uh, it was always the best when the security guard had to get changed out of a job because they were put on uh, elevator duty. And on some of the job sites we're at, we had those exterior elevators that basically you're just going up in a cage and you're watching the world go away from you as you go up however many floors. And they always had weight limits so you could... You knew that when the the exterior elevator was being assembled, you're like, just talk to the security guard, like, hey, how many more days till you're out of here? Because you're too big to operate that thing. They're going to get you out of here. And sure enough, it'd be a switch come a couple weeks later. <laughs> so how often do you eat candy? I'm sorry, I'm tying my shoe. On and off. I mean, I'll go on stints where I'll eat a ton of candy. Like, I'll get something stuck, like, if I'm getting on Airheads or, like, you know, candy bars or something like that. Like a Mr. Good Bar or a Snickers Kick or something like that. It's It goes in waves. Like, everything else, my impulses go in waves. And sometimes I'm better at it. Like, if I have, if I'm working out and, like, dieting, I don't need candy. Because I'm like, nah, dude. But if I'm not and I'm just kind of slugging around, I'm like, might as well eat some candy. I pay way too much for my teeth. My candy days are over. Uva. <laughs> I intermittently Uva. went to the dentist until I was like 27 years old, so I'm just had I, glad I have what I have. Yeah, well, if you good thing you've been going all these years, because I started, I start, I, was, I used to go a lot when I was young, then stopped for a good period in the middle of my life, and now that I go back, boy, I mean, I'm I'm getting there now, but. When I first walked in there, they looked at me like I was crazy. Like, whoa, whoa, don't put some work into your mouth. I'm like, no problem. Come on with it. Come on with it. I know what I'm signing up for, buddy. So Let's is Snickers, right. the Snickers bar, is that officially the Betty White candy bar? Because she was in, like, the first Snickers commercial? I don't know, but Snickers is the probably the best candy bar on the market. R.I.P. Betty White. R.I.P. Betty White. Who is the person you would have sex with that's dead? (laughs) Okay, let me set it up for you. Okay. How about this? One of them? Yo. Who would you... Who would you... Have sex with (laughs) that... Like, if they would be revived in their prime. Like, they're currently dead, but you could revive anybody that's ever died... And they're willing in their prime. They're like, I've been waiting for you, Mike Crawford. Bang. Who is it? I just told you. Who? 
Princess Diana, bro. Princess Diana. Still going after the white chicks, huh? You think she's like the most bangable chick ever? No, but she's Princess Diana, bro. You only get to bang her. You don't get anything. You only get to bang. I'm a, if I leave a baby in her, then I'm going to get everything I could possibly want. You're going to leave All a dead baby in one. her. <laughs> The That's the way to circumvent the abortion thing. Just have sex with dead people. You, Necrophilia. You said she's, you said she's, re- she's revived, revived for this one sexual session, and then she goes back into the ground, brother. Oh, no, no, no. no, no, no I'm not. I don't know. I'm not engaging in this. I need a live person. Bro. You already said Princess Diana. Her. She's alive while you're having sex with her. She just no lo- And she's revived in her prime. She's just. Yeah, with me. Which means she was the definitely Princess princess and then you fuck her to death how about that no i make a baby so i could be the no the the king of england could be my child i can't be nothing but he could be my child i'd have sex with oprah oprah ain't dead bro she's dead inside it's close enough (laughs) (laughs) fine how about how about mitzi shore so I could get up at the comedy store, be a paid regular. Would you have sex for a promotion or a job? Yeah, absolutely, especially if it's the top. Dog. But you got to be the top dog. I need full security. Like my boss, like if my boss right over me was a woman, no, 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 she don't count. I need her boss or her boss's boss, man. If she wants to go down, come on. If you want to go down, I'll level up. Let's go. Yeah, come on, come on down here to to us manager level, because I promise you, I'm gonna record right down and have all the tea if ever if this ever hits the fan, buddy. You are gonna pay for this? <laughs> I guess if I was gonna have sex with a dead person, it'd be Amelia Earhart. I just feel like she deserves a good going over. I think I could do it for her. Amelia Earhart. Like okay, the now. Astro- the- I have a lady, astronaut, person, thing. Not an astronaut, pilot. Yeah, whatever. I mean, for a woman to fly a plane, that's kind of like being an astronaut for a man. So, you know, I get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you had to have sex with somebody who is currently dead, who would it be? And they're just dead still. But you had to do it to save the world and your family. Or whatever scenario is going to make you answer this hypothetical question. Absolutely disgusting to think about having yeah. sex with them. It can be for some people. It's, it's we asked the tough questions be. here, Mike. Who would you have sex with Absolutely. that is currently dead? I don't know. I just told you, Princess Diana, she's dead. You double down on the same answer a lot, which I like about you. I, don't, I can't even think about it. It just means that, that your your brain is so hyper locked in on what you want. It's it's a good thing. I'm so scatterbrained. But I think if I was going to have sex with a dead person, it'd be Amy Winehouse. Because she probably looks the same. Yo, you were so disrespectful to Amy. Hey, she didn't die that long ago. I'm trying to think about somebody that died within the past, you know, decade. Not somebody that's 200 years old. That'd be so... Can you imagine boner on bones? You'd get some nasty friction there, man. Gotta have some with a little bit of pliability still. Can you move to the next subject? Because talking, thinking about having sex with dead people just disturbs me. Pixie sticks are for sixth graders. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to sports. We already run out of <laughs> locker room talk and candy. So John Jones is back. He is. Is he officially the goat now for good? Until I told you the goat, and I told you you can do that. Yeah, you did. But I don't know if you could have called somebody. It's hard to call somebody the GOAT when they go away and come back and they're. They take them away for stuff that's not supposed to. Like snorting cocaine doesn't help you. It's not advantageous. Snorting cocaine, crashing into pregnant ladies, and then fleeing the scene is not (laughs) performance enhancing. The owner beats his wife. Like, what the hell? What? Clearly, y'all don't have no rule. Yeah. So, like, stop holding these people accountable for shit, but you don't hold yourself accountable. To hell with that. Bone Jones should not be suspended anymore. Just let him keep kicking people's ass. That's what you want to see, right? You want to see fights? Let him kick people's ass. You sign up the people, he kicks their ass. That's what happens. He's literally never lost a fight. Only time he lost, he was disqualified. Because Bone Jones is the That's man. not true. He had a draw with Daniel Cormier. That's not a loss. I said the only time he lost a fight, Brendan. 
don't age yourself. Don't make yourself ever look that bad again, okay? Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> well, I'm only saying that because John Jones also had a no decision. So there was a no decision and a draw. So I, I was just trying to law. clarify. Yeah. Only law is DQ. Everything else is either no decision, tie, or he kicked their ass. True. And the, and the, and the tie with Cormier shouldn't have been a tie. He kicked Cormier's ass. I don't remember the fight, so I can't speak on it. But I will say that with John Jones coming back in the heavyweight division and beating a top guy, now is Cyril gain the best, best, best? I don't know. I've been paying that much attention. But for John Jones to come back, go to a different weight class, smash and grab, I mean, I don't think there's any argument anymore. And that might be the first bet that Drake has won. Because he always makes people lose. If Drake bets on you, you're probably going <laughs> The Drake fake. All right, well, speaking of other dudes that are kind of getting in trouble, we got this John Morant situation going on right now. Some multiple John incidences. <laughs> yeah. I swear, bro, like, sometimes, like, I don't try to make stuff a black-white thing, but sometimes black people just do the dumbest shit, bro. Like, the dumbest shit. Like, you're literally in the process of being investigated for gun shit, and you decide you're going to post a gun on your own Instagram Live. Like, what? Like, what part of that did you stop and think about? And the worst part of it all is that he carries his fucking dad around like he's part of his posse. But when's your dad going to be your fucking dad? and tell you that this shit is dumb. Because there's a lot of people where I'm from that wish they had a dad to tell them when they were doing dumb shit. And yet your dad's sitting right there allowing you to do dumb shit. Well, his and dad's one of those dads 200. that just wants to be a part of the crew. He wants to be in the action. He doesn't want to be outside of it. So whatever he's got no, a yes no, no, man. No. That is not. That's what he looks like now. If you check Jai's background, his dad was a dad. Jai is not. Then why is he doing dad. that now? Why is he just a part of the crew now? Supposedly he is... Because Ja now at this point now Ja is the money maker, but yeah. his dad was the money maker growing up. His dad put him in private school. Ja is not from the hood. Ja is a private school kid with a good mother and father at home background. He was raised by both parents. You ever see Eight Mile? And like and Eminem starts talking about the guy like ah he went to school yeah, with Papa both Doc. parents. Clarence, yeah, that's Ja. Yeah. So all this fake gangster shit, like you can keep that shit somewhere else, bro. You're from South Carolina. It, half the state don't even like you. You ain't no damn gangster, bro. You want to be tough now because you think that shit's cool. It ain't. Yeah. You're worth two hundred million dollars. It ain't your time to be cool. You rich already, bro. Well, cool. that's it's the whole. Money. That's the whole thing too. It's like there's there's a few different angles think? on this because number one. I don't know what it's like to be a rich and successful black guy, but I'm pretty sure there's some targets and pressures that come along with it. So on one hand, I do understand wanting to have protection for yourself. On the other hand, if you listen to Biggie at all, you have your posse carry your drugs and your guns. You don't need that if you get to a certain status. You are at that status, John. It's a way different than having protection and flashing on your Correct. Like Those are two different things. Gary, yes, you're supposed to carry. You wear diamonds. You're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You should always either have security, carry your own protection if it's legal. Let your dad, who wants to be in your posse, carry the gun. Not you. Whatever the case. Not you. There should be guns around to protect you. I am totally in agreement. 100%. But being drunk and flashing them on your Instagram live is just stupid. stupid. And not only that, it's like he's doing, he's flashing illegal stuff. Like, yeah, it's legal to carry in Colorado, but not if you're consuming alcohol. Like, you're under investigation, and then you're posting illegal activity on your social media. Like, I'm trying to be on your side, Ja. Like, if somebody comes into my house, I don't care who you are. Because, you know, this little thing came out about the teenager at his house, whatever. I don't know if you know this. I don't know how old the kid was. But teen goes all the way up to 19. And uh, where you grew up more than me... Anybody that was a teen could potentially be a threat, a death threat. So I get that. However, you don't flash guns at teens. You tell them, you see my boy right here? He will end your life. You tell him and point to the guy that will do it. You don't do it yourself when you're Ja fucking Moran. The fuck is his problem? He made a lot of stupid decisions here, and then they want to blame it all. I just hate, I hate the, he, 
because he's an NBA superstar, it's like, uh, he got alcohol problems. That's an alcohol rehab. Has that alcohol. come up? I yeah, he that's where he's at now. He went. That's why he's suspended. He's in alcohol rehab. He's in rehab for alcohol and and uh, we're not blaming alcohol for this shit. No. It's a young kid making dumb decisions on your shit and stop making the same dumb decisions. We're not going. Okay, you've been abusing the alcohol a bit much. Okay, you're rich. You've been cool. I get it. Yeah. But we're not blaming that all for your stupidity. Stop being stupid, dude. You made it all the way to the NBA, so you ain't stupid. You're smart enough to navigate this role because you weren't no top recruit. You weren't no superstar. Come, you weren't any of that, job. Ja. You earned this. You worked hard and earned this shit. And now so you're cool. going to give it Enjoy all away it. with stupidity. With stupidity. Enjoy it, but don't give it all away to be stupid. Please, man, this is... One black man to another, and I know you're a lot richer than me and a lot younger than me, but I'm asking you nicely. Don't throw it all away for stupidity, please, bro. Like you're you are you are crazy, you're tricky. That's the thing that sucks about it too, is it's like he did earn all this by himself. You know what I mean? And he came out of nowhere to be in the conversation with the number one pick that was supposed to be unequivocally the only pick. Like, he got to be in that conversation. He elevated himself to that status. And then when that other guy couldn't perform because of whatever, he took that opportunity to take over the league to where the league is trying to show every possible John Morant highlight to get this young dude who's exciting elevated in the league, and he's doing everything to ruin it for himself. It's just so sad to watch. And then it kind of makes me think in the back of my mind, and it's unfortunately... I've learned from experience, especially currently, is if you make a mistake, people will then retroactively go and apply your same logic and theory to your mistake to everything else you've ever done to categorize you. So now what I'm doing with John Morant is a thing that I don't want people to do to me that I fucking hate. And I look at his playing... And his off-field stuff together. So I'm like, okay, he's doing all this stuff off-field. Then I look at on the court, and I go, okay. Yeah, you do kind of play like a, I want the MVP, but don't care if we win the championship. Yeah, you do kind of play a little, like, yeah, let's go get my superstar dunk. And if we win, we win. You know, it's making me question the stuff on the court that is what got him to this place. And I hate that. I hate. You know who doesn't question him? Nike. Yeah. Nike is back in school. <laughs> Nike is funneling ESPN the money. They're like, keep putting those highlights up, baby. Keep putting those highlights up, baby. Yeah, man. But I wish John the best. Hopefully he comes out of this okay. Him and the dumb dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, hopefully they just come out okay, man. Yeah, it can but, uh, be something that it hasn't gone too far down the rabbit hole to where he can come out of this, even this season on the other side, and then just be done with it. He's just got to make that decision to be like, hey, you can still be Billy Badass, but just have a badass entourage. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at what Diddy did. Diddy ain't no tough motherfucker, but you will die if Diddy says you're going to. Basically. You know, I so I mean, come on. Like, there is a way to be a badass without you having to do anything. You think it's a skinny man syndrome? He's so skinny, he's got to carry a big gun. <laughs> no, because the gun was little as shit. I don't even think it was a gun. Is that I just because that's all lighter. he could hold up? Is a tiny little pistol? <laughs> no, I think it was a lighter. That's my personal. I, I think it's one of those gun lighters. I, it was then so that's small. even was... dumber. That's even no, dumber I, I than Plaxico Burris shooting either. himself in the leg. At least it was just like a real gun. If you're gonna get, because yeah, I've had a, I've had a Deuce Deuce before, which is the smallest caliber gun. Yeah. And it was bigger than that. Like the, I've seen the picture. I've seen the video. It looks like it might have been a real gun because you know they can afford shit that I can't afford. So he might have just bought some little special shit. But if you're asking me, I thought it was one. When I initially saw it, I thought it was one of those lighter guns. Little pea shooter. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, that's enough about Ja. Let's quick tackle NFL real quick. Um. NFL tags. How do you feel about starting with Saquon Barkley? It worked out for them. It right? did. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't sign it if I was Saquon. 10 million? That's bullshit. 
but running backs are pretty much go get it. So him, Jacobs, and Pollard all make the same amount. And Pollard's never been a full time back in his entire life. Josh Jacobs who literally led the league in rushing last year. And Saquon is supposed to be this guy. And they all make the same amount as the guy who's never started before. <laughs> well, I'm not stop. Tony Pollard is, you know, I know your affection for him already, but Tony Pollard yeah, is the I man, dude. Good. I think he's good. I don't think he should be paid the same amount as dudes who've had to lead the league in rushing, had to carry the load at running back to a guy who shared time all his career so far. Like, he he got to the Pro Bowl, his contract gear. Like, I like Tony Pollard. If I'm Josh Jacobs or Saquon, though, I'm mad. I mean, that's oh, for sure. Without Saquon, the Giants don't make the playoffs, and Danny Jones is cut midseason. Or benched, I mean. And without Josh Jacobs, the Raiders lose even more games than they already did. Like uh, You see what they're doing to Lamar? They didn't even give Lamar the full franchise. He got the exclusive tag. 32.4 million. If he's, that is a way of the Ravens saying, we want someone to offer you a contract so we can get two first-round picks. Yep. Because there's no what thirty two point four mil. That is that is that is disrespectful. You know Lamar's not signing that. Like you, we all know Lamar's not signing that. That's the we're gonna put this tag on you. We know you're not gonna sign it, but we're gonna let you go negotiate your new contract with whoever. And when they sign you, we'll take that two first round pick. And then all these teams jump talking about they're out on Lamar. Like what the fuck did Lamar do to the league? Did I miss it? Did I miss something? No. He just he hasn't necessarily won, and now he's starting to get injured. He never necessarily won. What he's won the MVP. There's no. There's only three quarterbacks in the league that's won the MVP. So he's won the MVP, and he leads an offense that is literally the least paid offense in the entire NFL. Yeah. Their offensive salary cap is the least in the NFL. He has no weapons. He has no nothing. And your team, the last two years before he got injured or before he decided to not any play anymore last year, because I truly don't believe he was injured, you were number one in the AFC, not in the division that you're in. You were number one in the But what about in the playoffs? What do you mean? Last year in the playoffs, he didn't play. This year, he didn't play in the playoffs. And the year before that, he didn't play. But this year, Okay, he well, that's... So what are you giving me, Lamar? That's the thing that you're missing, Mike, well, is what are you giving me in the postseason? Playoffs. No, two years ago he played. What do you mean? What is he giving you? Give me in the postseason. Give me wins in the postseason. When I have an equal playing field, can we compare the talent? But here's the can here's. Compare- hang on, hang on. You're saying you want equal playing fields. The Baltimore Ravens obviously have never spent money on offense. So if they're going to continue to not spend money on offense, that's fine. Now the part that I do get that you're saying is okay. The Ravens are fucked up in their head. Why is everybody else fucked up? And I'm just saying, maybe the option is because for that much money, a guy that doesn't seem to win or play in the postseason wants $60 million a year? That's a lot. Yeah, because the other people who make that amount of money also have a number one receiver and their offensive line is top notch. Let's compare him to the quarterback that are making forty, fifty, sixty thousand million million, $60 million a year, Aaron Rodgers. Receivers galore, at least three nice weapons. Daniel Jones, Derek Carr. Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones makes four. He just signed a deal for forty million, so we're not going to count him. And Derek Jones, the Saints have weapons. They already have Chris Olave. They have Mike Thomas, who's a twenty million dollar back, and they have Alvin Kamara. And the offensive line in, in New Orleans is well put together, maybe missing a piece. So we're not going to do that. Geno's offensive line. They drafted offensive line two years in a row, and they have weapons. So what are you talking like? We're, we're not going to do this. If you're a good quarterback, your organization gets you weapons if they believe in you. They've never gotten a Lamar weapon. Never. Josh Allen, when they started to believe in him and they signed him to a big deal, was the first thing they did. Got him weapons. Yeah, but they also signed him to a big deal. The Ravens aren't signing him to a big deal. What I'm saying is you can't blame him for saying, oh, he doesn't win this and this when he's going up against people who have weapons. And you I'm don't not, give him any. Listen, I'm not blaming him for it. You you're asking what – you're asking what the stigma from the other teams besides the Ravens is. And I'm saying if I'm, let's say I'm the 49ers right now. Well, you can't afford them. So we're not, you can't use the 49ers. Doesn't right? matter. Not okay, not fine. So let's say I'm the Cowboys right now. The Cowboys would give up everything in the world for Lamar. They just, it, they just wouldn't. The, the teams that are out like the commanders. Okay, fuck it. Let's go all the way back to the East Coast. Let's go to Tampa Bay. 
Let's go to Tampa Bay where they're just fire sale everything. They can afford it. Now, is Tampa Bay going to spend $60 million on a quarterback that may or may not play for the next, out of the next five years? It's looking like maybe three and a half years he'll play and he might get injured in the, for another season and a half. That's not legit. It's pure speculation, but if you're season. putting $60 million on the line, you want more of a guarantee than somebody who hasn't played in the playoffs in the last two years. He hasn't. He chose. They made it last year. He played this year. He chose not to play because of the contract situation. He wasn't. I don't believe he was that hurt. That's just my opinion. Right. So do you want somebody like that on your team for $60 million? You're putting all your eggs in one basket on this guy. And so if I'm an NFL team, I might not feel so confident about that. That's all I'm saying is I may not want to yeah. put all my eggs in the Lamar Jackson basket if I see maybe what the 49ers are doing, maybe what all these other teams are doing. It's like if you have a serviceable quarterback and you put your money into athletes around them, you can win. Look at Miami. Look at all these other teams. So maybe Lamar Jackson, maybe you split one. that did 60 million up. Did I miss? Did, the, did Miami win anything? Did San Francisco win anything? I don't remember them winning anything. So that shit, that formula doesn't work. It gets you the same place Lamar's been. He's been to the AFC Championship. If you want to count that. That's all he's going to get you. Does that count for anything? But the more money you put into Lamar, the less money you have to put in all those skill positions that you want to give him. You want Super Bowls. And how do you do that when you give your quarterback $60 million and you also need to stop other teams from scoring? How do you do that? At at Kansas City, could they do it right now? Yeah, they They have Travis Kelsey. Exactly. So give Mahomes. There's only one Travis Kelsey. He might be the greatest tight end of all time. He is. So give Lamar somebody comparable because Mark Andrews is pretty good. Mark Andrews is like Mark Andrews, George Kittle, and Travis Kelsey are the top three in the conversation. He had one of the top tight ends in the league, and he couldn't do shit with it. You see what you see the difference is? Baltimore had Orlando Brown. They chose not to pay him. Guess who chose to pay him? Because they know what the thing they need. Offers alignment and at least one superstar weapon. Can Lamar get that? Can you pay his offers alignment to protect him? Does he have to run for his life every year? Not if you're giving him all the money. Mahomes makes all the money, so that's a bullshit excuse. That's not Michelle. Mahomes is the top of the top when it comes to quarterback. Yes, and so who else do they have? They have a rotating running back system. Their the wide receivers are all wide receivers from old teams that re-signed with them because they couldn't afford they to keep their... the position that matter. They paid their offensive linemen. Okay. And they paid Travis Kelsey. So do the same for Lamar. You won't even pay your offensive line. You but now you're talking but, but now you're not talking about just paying Lamar, because we're not talking about Baltimore anymore. We know that they don't want to pay him. We're talking about all the other thirty one NFL teams. But now you're saying, if I do pay for Lamar, now I also have to make sure it's the proper setup and all this kind of shit. And I'm just saying, that's a lot to... Every good quarterback. But that's a lot to under... Okay. Or, or you could spend that money and get a wide receiver and a tight end or a wide receiver and a tackle. And you could get two... You're not going to win. If the aim is to win the Super Bowl, you're not going to win. Period. That's not it. We see who's winning. The team with the top quarterback that gets paid the top of the top, his weapon, and his offensive line. You have to have those things. Period. I don't care. What, like, you're not winning without yes, those things. Yes, I agree. The, the part that we're not agreeing on is if you give Lamar all that money, you can the, – the level of athlete you're going to be able to afford at all those other positions goes down significantly. So you have to go with win above replacement. Is Lamar Jackson that much better than Tua – With all those... Now, if you put Lamar Jackson in Miami, I think Miami is a fucking powerhouse that needs to be watched out for. Well, not with them cutting all their defensive backs and things. But if you put Lamar Jackson on the Dolphins last year, they could be AFC Championship Super Bowl contending team. And that's what we disagree on. Because I disagree with that sentiment, and we're just going to agree to disagree. Well, why do you disagree that if he has weapons... He still pay the, the weapons. I see Kansas City do it. I see, I see Buffalo do it. But that's what I'm saying. I'm giving you one small window of opportunity to where it's like, okay, with the Miami situation, had you plugged in Lamar last year, they had enough weapons around him. They had a decent enough offensive line. Not great, but about as good as Baltimore's, but they had way better weapons. So I'm saying that type of a situation, sure, that makes sense. But for the majority of the NFL teams out there, they aren't plug and play 
a $60 million quarterback. They can't do that. They would have to restructure their team. And then by the time they do that, what is that, one or two years down the line? Then how much more of Lamar do you have? So for Lamar to be transplanted into a team that can win with Lamar now, it's very few and far between. Do I think that there's, like, do I think that the Texans should sign him to an eight-year deal? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Will they? Probably not. That would be dumb for them because of the draft capital. Well, that's fine. But there, he needs to go somewhere where they might suck for the first two or one or two years and be he's fighting for a Atlanta. playoff spot. And that's, and that's going to be a great spot for him. And that would be a good spot for him. But to be oh, taken shit. aback by half of the NFL teams going like, hey, no, we, uh, we're we just going to put this guy in here or not put this guy in or not entertain that offer, that makes sense to me. It does. It's not as egregious or appalling as uh, to me as you're making it sound with paying Lamar. But $32 million is nothing to sneeze at, although it is from the team that you've been carrying, it's a slap in the face. $32 million is shit money. That's Geno money. That, that, you, yeah. should, you should go off it. Yeah. I agree. All right. Well, what else, what are you watching these days? Mm, what am I watching? Not much. My show just went on. Oh, Blacklist started back up. So I'm watching Blacklist. That's my shit. Final season. And Snowfall final season. So those are the two things I'm watching besides sports. Did you catch the Chris Rock <laughs> special? No, I haven't watched it. I heard about it. it. Should be. I heard it was okay. I heard it's probably going to get some reviews from the LBGT community. But uh, it's really not overall. Oh, that's what I heard. I don't know. Well, that's you know, everybody it doesn't matter what comedy special comes out. There's going to be a few particular groups that are going to be slightly offended because they have to be. It's almost like we're obligated to stand up for ourselves type of a situation with their superhero capes on. It's like, well, or you could just accept that they're jokes. And uh, if it wasn't anything heinous, which I watched it, I there was not one thing where I was like, ooh, and usually that's my favorite part is when I'm like, oh, shouldn't have done that. That was awesome. I didn't get one of those, not one. So it was a pretty clean special. I think with Netflix streaming this thing live, they specifically were like, hey, man, we want you to be Chris Rock and everything, but let's, you know, let's fit it in this box. Um, and he did. He did a great job. You know, there was, um, he flubbed the Will Smith closer joke. That he ended with uh, the Mil- Will Smith situation, and he kind of flubbed it. But then, as a professional doing something live, he backtracked as far as he needed to and kind of reset the joke, and he made it work. So that was that was fun as a comic for me to see him like in real time mess something up, fix it on the fly, and get through it. Because that's some like a lot of times on stage, I'll just abandon something and move on to the next. Um, so I was glad to see that, but it was fun. It was good. It's a good. I mean, he's one of the best of all time, so it's always good to see him out in action. Yeah, so I'll give it a watch at some point. And I started watching the show that I ended up finishing, called The Sandman, on Netflix. Never heard. Of that. Super weird. Super random. Um, it's an alternate realms with dreams and nightmares and reality and all this stuff. And honestly, the first half of this has only been one season. It's coming out for a second season sometime soon. The first half of the season was really good. Like, it sucked me in. I'm like, dude, I can't wait to see what's happened next. I can't wait to see what's happened next. And then, like, halfway through the season, the the first half plot just kind of fell off. And then they just kind of started a new arc out of nowhere. So it's like the McDonald arches. It's like mid-season, they're done with one story, and then you're like, oh, where's that going to lead? And they're like, no, that's just done. Now we're going to the next thing. And you're like, oh, that was kind of weird. And then it fizzles out to where it was just like the last episode was not 
there was no finality to it. There was no conclusion to it. It was just very ambiguous, like they're walking off in the distance and you can figure out however you want it to end. It was just kind of like, oh, okay. So now I don't know if I'm excited to see season two, but I would say the first half of The Sandman was worth watching. And then if you're into it, you can keep going, but I don't know. It was, uh, it's entertaining if you're into transporting in different realms and things like that. But it was actually, the thing that caught me by surprise was it was a lot more gory than I expected. Like, I thought this thing was going to be about dreams and nightmares. And the next thing you know, it's like a couple episodes in and people are exploding. And not like the, like the, oh, you think it's coming and then at the last second they cut away and then they, they cut back and you see the aftermath. Not, they show like reversed implosions of bodies and you're like, whoa, I did not see that coming. But it's in the dream, so it doesn't scare me as much. So it was kind of weird. It was pretty gory for something that just kind of came out of nowhere. So if you're into that horror kind of weird mind-melding realm stuff, The Sandman's worth worth a watch to see if you like it. And then if you do, it's... I finished the season, so I can't say anything too bad about it. But it ended a lot less strong than it started. If that makes sense. All right, well, I know we got to get rolling here. Do you want to do top five or you want to skip it? Skip it, I got to go. All right, my man. Well, I love you very much. Um, albinos with brown, brown eyes scare me. <laughs> and so do women with unibrows. But I love you very much, Mike. Thank you for popping on love and making too, this work. Man. We will come back bigger, better, and blacker next week. <laughs> All right, my guy. You enjoy the rest of your day. All right. You too. I love you, dude. Peace.